Welcome to the world united. Welcome to the world united. All right, we're going to move on to Rick Arnelis. I'm going to pull him up here. Rick is a best-selling author, speaker, and professional coach who empowers and connects others to spread positive change and elevate social impact. With a social sciences communications degree and over 25 years of additional study, he has trained over 10,000 hours in communication, sociology, interpersonal relationships, and leadership. He's the author of 12 Hours of Heaven, Lessons for a Better World, and founder of iSpark Change, a global movement and online community of those who are positively impacting the world and bettering humanity. Rick has been featured as an expert in multiple media outlets, including national, international television and radio. He's a regular writer at Lifehack, guest contributor for various websites, and has inspired listeners across the globe as a guest on over 50 podcasts. His next book, 12 Hours of Heaven, Time on Earth, is in the works now. Welcome, Rick. Thank you. Thank you very much, Anastara. Uh, thank you for the, the intro. And thank you, everybody, for being here today um, to, for this wonderful transformational experience. And you know, final gratitude um, to Desiree for um, everything you shared. And it's you know, I, it's, it's really, I, I think everything always happens for a reason. And, and as you finish, you talked about creating purpose in your life. And, and that's exactly what I'm going to discuss. Uh, I'm going to discuss today is, you know, what that means for some of our um, younger folks and, and what that means as you, you know, as you get older, like me, <laughs> and, and as you move on in life. So I'm going to share my screen here, because um, I have just a couple slides. Um, so as Anastar was saying, I am the founder of iSpark Change, and, and our, our big focus is to empower others, to show others that you are not alone. And that's super important, um, super important for us in, in everything we do. So we'll discuss that a little bit. But, but for, for today, you know, what's your purpose, right? And I ask that question to everybody that's, everybody that's watching right now about what, what your purpose is, because that's something that... that it's not a question that you often hear, right? It's not a, a question that typically comes up until you have some kind of a life experience um, like Desiree was just talking about. It, it's not something that is a regular part of regular conversation. Let's just put it that way, right? And what I found um, through many years of studying myself and studying others is that it should be something that is discussed at a far, a far younger age. And, you know, younger folks, especially Generation Z, they are our future. They make up the largest segment of the population now as of a couple years ago, you know, approximately like 25 to 30%. And um, they, the good thing is that two thirds of them believe that they can change the world and that they can impact humanity in a greater way. And that's far greater than any few, uh, former generation. So I'm putting my faith in all you young folks out there to create your purpose, right? Because when I was your age, if someone had asked me, what's your purpose? I mean, maybe it was a teacher or someone in a in, you know, class or church or something. I would have thought like, they're crazy. I don't even know what I'm, you know, what I'm going to have, what I want for breakfast, let alone what my purpose is. Right. And, and so, you know, I didn't, I never really thought of it. Right. And it took me many, many years to realize that my purpose was to love and to give and to serve and in many capacities. Right. But but as I said, that took me decades, decades of life. And, and I feel that, that um, humanity has progressed at such a rapid rate that it can come much earlier. So for me, it took a life experience um, to, to really realize what my purpose is. And about 20 years ago, I was living in Southern California um, with my wife and, and two young daughters at the time, um, my daughters who are now grown, but they were, they were uh, four and one at the time. And we were coming back from a, from a birthday party, a children's birthday party that was about two hours away from our house. And we we're driving back on a Sunday afternoon and, and it starts raining really hard, the kind of rain where the wipers can't even clear the, the water off the windshield. And we see cars pulling over and cars um, you know, waiting out the storm. And, and I discussed that with my wife. I say, should we wait it out? And, and she says, you know what? Um, it, it's going to get dark soon and, and then it'll be worse. And we're still a couple hours from home. So we decided to venture on really cautiously. Well, 
as we are driving in the slow lane of this large freeway in Los Angeles, um, I hit a puddle and we start hydroplaning and spinning out of control. And we spin across four lanes to the left and miraculously do not hit the center divider. And I'm trying to steer and I'm screaming and my wife's screaming and, and the kids were in the back asleep and I don't, I'm hoping they're okay at this time, but we don't hit the center. And we spin back the other direction across four lanes, the other direction. And we go off the shoulder. Um, we hit a dirt embankment and hit a, a uh, block wall at high speed and we flip over completely and we land back on the wheels. And the roof is smashed down to about here and the windshield shattered and the right side glass is all shattered and the car's filled with dirt. And my kids are crying and, and I, I check my wife, she's okay. And the kids, are, and, and everyone seems okay. We all seem like there's, there's no, 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 um, you know, no harm. And so we crawl out of my door and, and an elderly couple had pulled over and they, the lady wraps a blanket around my wife and none of us have a scratch on us. And, and the gentleman tells me that it, he thought we were killed for sure. He had called 911 and he thought we were killed. And he said it was the most amazing thing he had ever seen. And being a young guy, I, I was thinking, oh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm invincible, right? I, I'm tough. These kind of things don't affect me, right? And I was like, ah, it wasn't that bad. You know, it was an accident, but hey, look, we're all good. Everything was fine, right? We, we lived. Everything's okay. But over the, over the next few days, I really started to reflect and different signs started to hit me that it was a big deal, that we escaped this unscathed, that it was a miracle. And when I went to pick up our things as the car, the car had to be towed away. And I went to pick up our things from the, the tow truck um, office impound yard. And the attendant there, when I went to pick up our car, I said, yeah, I need to get things out of this, this black, um, out of this black Grand Prix. And he said, that's not your car. And I said, yeah, that's my car. And he said, no, the person who was driving that is dead. You know, by the looks of that car, they were killed for sure. And it really caused me to reflect, right? All these things caused me to reflect. And a couple months later, I'm sitting in my car, just staring at this guardian angel pin that my mother had given me to protect us. And because she felt that it's what had happened in that situation. And this idea for a story hits me about an angel that, that has come down from heaven to help individuals on earth. And so I think about it and I said, you know, I, I really should write this because this is really important. So I, I I start by writing this, what I call the to-do list for every day. And these were basic things and reflecting in my life, I realized, look, I don't have a purpose, right? I, 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 what am I living my life for, right? I'm sure I'm trying to take care of my family as a, young, as a young man starting out a family, but what am I really here for? What am I on this planet? And, and so these are, these are 12 things that I wrote down, right? And as you can see, they're, they're, they're basic tenets of life, right? They're things that are are preached in various religions all over the world, things that are taught in, in, in books everywhere. And, and yet I realized I wasn't living with these things in mind, that I was taking all of these things for granted, right? And, and, I, and I said, okay, I'm going to focus on these and, and that's going to be my life. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to devote my life to this, right? And I said, okay, I'm going to write a book about this, this book about this angel that comes down. And you know what? I wrote about a page and I filed it away on a laptop and I went back to my life. And then as, as God and the universe will keep doing, they'll keep giving you these signs, right? And then it was just three years later that my sister took her own life after suffering with, you know, with mental illness and, and bipolar depression. And, and, um, and uh, other family members had passed away and, my marriage started to suffer and, and, and all these things were coming and all these signs. And I, and, and I dug up this list and I said, okay, you have to get back to uh, focusing on the things that are important. Right. And, and, and I realized, I realized as I was, you know, here I'm in, here I'm in my, you know, early thirties, mid thirties. I'm like, I'm not, why is it taking me this long to figure this out? Right. And so, so I started to focus on, on, you know, these tenants from this list, as I call them, and I started to focus on what was more important, you know, what was more important in life. And I, and I, and I tried to work on it, you know, work on it with more diligence on a daily basis, right? But it, 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 it's hard. 
it's hard as on a, on a daily basis to, to do some of these things because we're human. Right. And, and I, I ended up going about life, right. I ended up going about life for, for 20 years, for 20 more years, going about life, trying to live the best as I can, right. Practicing these on a pretty regular basis, but not really, but living small, not really seeking to, to help the masses, right? Not really seeking to help humanity like we're, like we're doing here today. And it wasn't until, until um, last year during, um, during pandemic where my business had, had almost completely shut down um, coaching business and, and I had no revenue coming in and I found myself getting anxious and, and fearful and, and going into that, that you know, dark hole of, of mental issues and realizing, wait, you have to wake, wake up from this. And once again, I dug up this list and I dug up this list and said, okay, find your purpose again, find your purpose, go out and create that purpose. And that's when I decided to finally write that book, right? So I wrote the book, 12 hours of heaven. I, I got incredibly spiritually connected during my writing to where I felt that it was, the story was just being given to me that a higher power was giving me the story. And I was just typing and I ended up completing the story um, in under three months where I just thought, Oh, this was going to take me a year. And it just, I went from writing 500, 500 words in, in a day to 2000 in a couple hours and, and finished the book. And during the time of writing, I realized that I was being called to do more that I was being called that. Yes. I was finally living, doing, trying to live in that purpose, but I was being called to create more purpose in my life. And I started having dreams and visions of a, of a greater world that can happen. And what, what would happen if I had put some work, some greater work into it? And that's where I had a vision of, of I Spark Change, of building this community of beautiful souls to help spread positive change around the world and help empower others to, you know, to elevate their social impact and, and show them that they do have a voice and they can make a difference. And, and that's where I started speaking and writing and, and starting to spread this message and amplify this message. And so for, for anyone out there that's listening, you know, especially the, especially the younger folks, that this is so important that you're listening, you know, I, 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 you need to find your own list, right? You need to find your own list. If I give you these 12 things, right, it, it's too much. But, but I have three, three, three tips for you to, to leave you with three tips. One, Three tips that will help you find your purpose is don't care about what other people think. I was so focused throughout my life of worrying about what others would think of me if I did this or if I did that, that it stopped me from creating all the beautiful things that I could create. So go out there and just when you when you get older like me, you realize, you know what, they're not really focused on you anyways. Everyone's always just just worried about about, you know, themselves and inside and and, and it doesn't really matter. Right. Secondly, is don't make excuses. You know, when you learn to take res personal responsibility, I, I would take so many excuses back then, and it would always be someone else's fault. And, and I didn't start the book because of, you know, I had other things going on, and, and my work was too much, and this and that, and I bl put blame everywhere else. But once I finally realized that I had control of everything, I had control of whether to be happy, or, or whether um, to create this or, or create that, then that's when it all changed. And lastly, don't be afraid to fail. You know, for years I was afraid. I, I had to. I always had to so, be so competitive that I had to show up and I had to be the one that always won and, and couldn't lose and couldn't fail. And then I realized one of my mentors realized that fa failure is the greatest teacher we have in life. The greatest teacher we have in life, because every time you fail is a new opportunity to learn something and to grow and to expand. And that's such a beautiful thing, you know, with, with, um, excuse me, with struggles come strength, you know, from challenges come courage, from wor worry comes wisdom, from obstacles, you, you um, find opportunities. And in doing so, you turn all that adversity into your advantages. So, you know, I urge you as you go forward to not be afraid to fail. Don't worry about what other people think. And you know, take personal responsibility for, for everything and don't make excuses. And, you know, remember whether, you know, you're a part of Ice Park Change or whatever you're doing in life is, you know, empower others, empower yourself, 
because you're, you're the only one that is going to create your purpose, right? No one's going to do it for you. If you wait for that incredible life experience to create your purpose, you could be waiting for a very long time. So create that purpose, start, start now. You don't have to know what your purpose in life is today or even tomorrow, but you know, they say that the best day, the best time to plant a tree is today, or it, excuse me, the best time to plant a tree is 25 years ago. And the second best time is today. So if, you know, if you want to look back when you're my age and realize that you found your purpose at a, at a young age, then plant those seeds now. So thank you, everybody. And God bless you. Wonderful. Thank you. So appreciate you, Rick, and all of your wisdom. I love it. The I spark. <laughs> it's so great. Even the logo is amazing. Thank you for sharing your story. Yeah. Hello. All right, Rick, I'm so appreciative of what you had to share. And really, truly, I feel like as soon as I found my purpose, that's when my whole life just I went on track and I'm staying on track and it keeps me motivated and inspired and you know there's nothing better than feeling a fulfilled life feeling like what you're doing with your life is fulfilling it's like one of the main goals of us being humans on this planet to love and be loved and to live a fulfilling life um or at least have a perspective that is fulfilling right we could be fulfilled by so many things every day 